Let's start from the north of Ghana, where there is a race against time to save large tracts of farm produce and other property likely to be destroyed by floods when authorities in Burkina Faso spilled the Bagri Dam. Previous spills have left many residents displaced and several properties destroyed, including farmlands. The impact has been devastating over the years. Here's the background of the Bagri Dam. It will come on your screen shortly. Uh, but when it comes, we'll be telling you about what authorities have done so far. But of course, we've seen farmers trying to harvest their farm produce ahead of Friday's spill. And uh, we will be speaking to NADMO and Farmers Association on what to do to minimize the impact. First, though, let's connect with our correspondents in the regions up north to check the mood there. On Zoom, joining me are... Uh, our correspondents from the North Rafik Salam is in the Upper West region where floods from long hours of rainfall have already battered farmlands, destroyed roads and left many displaced. And of course, uh, Albert Sori would also be joining us. But let's look at uh, the graphics uh, coming to you. Sona Bell is the agency that manages the Bagri and Kompienga dams in Burkina Faso. It has announced that the annual spillage of the dams would take place from Friday, August 27 to Monday, August 30 this year. The upstream level of the Bagri Dam has risen to 233.99 meters with a rate of rise at 86.51% as against 101.16% same period last year. This means that I mean, this year's um, spillage uh, may not may cause less havoc than previous years. If you look at the increase uh, rates of 86, over 86 to 101 there, then you know that the spillage may be, the damage may be less. Now, the number of persons killed is six uh, in 2020 through, through the Bagri Dam spillage. Number of persons displaced is over 78,000. And uh, farmlands destroyed is um, almost 32,000 acres. Dr. Baumia um, has been uh, speaking on this. According to him, works on the over $1 billion Kwalugu Dam were in progress to help halt flooding from the Bagri Dam spillage. Now, the vice president disclosed that prior to the flooding, the contractors had already commenced work by clearing the site up to the river. This is something we'll be finding out um, to know where exactly we are with that one. Now, NADMO has begun sensitization of residents living in flat prone areas along the White Volta on what to do to save lives and property. All right, so Rafik is on. Albert Sori would also be joining us for this conversation. We have Martina Buguri, who is from the north, and we also have um, Isaac Nonya from the Savannah region. Let's start with you, Rafiq Salam. Um, what can you tell us? Um, Aisha, uh, thank you uh, for your time. Anytime this issue of the Bagri uh, down as spillage uh, comes to mind, the people in the Upper West region, especially those living in the Eastern Corridor, have a lot of uh, fears. They have sleepless nights because they know uh, what it can uh, do uh, to their our lives and so uh, normally these are uh, uh, better than one at uh, a spill it happens around river sicily coming towards the two area and then also around the what is a uh, district and so the people actually they have a lot of fears when it comes to mind that it's going to be a uh, spill and so not more uh, for the past a uh, few uh, weeks a couple of weeks has been uh, telling people in those areas uh, that they should those especially those living in the low lying areas to move uh, up uh, so that uh, they could uh, avoid uh, this uh, spillage. You know, of course, we are having a, a, a disaster of our own, talking about this uh, flash floods that occurred uh, in the region. And so they think that it will be double agony or double jeopardy on the part of the people uh, if this should uh, happen to them. So, not more uh, the past few days, I've been uh, talking to uh, the communities that are lying around the area, especially those living around the eastern corridor uh, of the region, uh, so that they move upstream, so that they move up and then to uh, save lands. And they are even advising them uh, to even use schools and also 
purchases or mocks, at least uh, they should be a safer place for them uh, to stay in. Sorry. You are in the Upper East region where the impact has been felt heaviest in the past villages. Yes, Aisha. And this year, the farmers again are extremely worried. Uh, today, I've been talking to some of them uh, in the Pualugu area, uh, also as well as Balungu in the Talensi district. And again, uh, they are afraid that what always happens when times like this come uh, could repeat uh, this year. Now, the challenge is that these farmers um, have no other lands apart from the farms that they have around the basin of the White Volta where they do the farming. And so every year they keep going back to try. Some of them are able to harvest before uh, the, the floods come. Others are not able to. So as we speak, there are those who have said that they have managed to harvest a little. Some have started um, you know, trying to get the little they can get from their farms today. Um, you know, in the hope that by the time the water gets here, uh, they would have been able to get a little of their harvest before uh, any impending floods. Last year, we had a very serious situation in the Upper East region because um, we had heavy rains in, in this region <coughs> around the same time that the dam was spilled. So it made the situation uh, very serious than it would have been uh, if, it, if it had to do with just the spillage from the Bagre Dam. Uh, this year, the, it appears that the heavy rains have already come and gone because uh, the last uh, uh, two weeks and last week, we had so many rains. We haven't had so many of them this week. So the expectation is that if, if the rains don't return, uh, only the spillage will not cause the same amount of havoc that it caused last year because last year we lost lives and we had um, the Bolga Boku Road cut off at Kobori in the Boku West district. That was when uh, the vice president had to come and then, you know, keep a situation for himself and get the roads minister involved to try and, you know, reconstruct that road and open it to the traffic once again. So um, the expectations um, are that maybe we won't have a similar situation. Uh, like we had last year, but the farmers are taking precautions. Mm. What has been the impact um, over the years? Martina Bugri is joining us from Tamale. Martina. Martina Bugri. Kindly unmute, Martina. Yes, Aisha. For the people of the northern region, uh, NADMO has begun sensitization that they move to higher ground. But let's go back to what happened last year and last year even though they had early rains and so people were able to plant early and um, floods came to everything this year is a different story because the rains came in late and so people had to plant and um, somewhere in may it means that the harvest is ready yet but they would have to leave these farmlands and move up, up to higher ground. And so the farmers are worried that they would lose eventually everything. Majority of them actually planted meat, and just a few are harvested. And that's one um, part of it. Uh, the other issue is that those who were affected, like the Nawuni community, they were asked to relocate. They had agreed to relocate, but they could not uh, built on these new locations. And so they went back to their old community. What we are being told now is that they are being told to move up uh, to higher grounds. And so the people themselves have started moving, hoping that uh, by fourth Friday, they would have moved everything before the floods start coming in. In, in the Savannah region, there's also similar impact on farmlands, on, on um individuals. Uh, uh, thankfully, Isaac Nonya is our correspondent there. Isaac Nonya, share with us um, what the preparations have been for residents there. Yes, Aisha, uh, preparations so far, those who have started a ground lot, they have moved out. But farmers who are into vegetable cropping and a yam are yet to do that. Because last year, the impact was very heavy. And uh, that more official and that more and that of the regional minister, they are gone. I have advised these residents and the farmers to relocate from these areas to avoid what happened last year. 
as of last year, well, there was one life that lost. A school people uh, went out to play with their friends and didn't return, and that was it. But I can tell you that many of these victims are these nomads who are cattle uh, rarers and that of uh, the, the peasant farmers who will not budge, who will not move out from the location that they were asked to move. So it's the wait and see attitude that is there. But I can tell you that officials from NADMO and a lot of those who matter from the assembly, Central Gonja and North Gonja, are here to make a move to get these people out. We don't know whether it was because they told them last year to move, is the reason why they are not making effort to remind them to move up to higher height or not. But now schools have reopened. In case a similar thing will occur, there will not be any place to house them because students are in now and they cannot do anything like the, uh, the Sanada Senior High, where it happened in last year, a lot of resources were mobilized. Remember, Joint News, to, in collaboration, will start a Red Cross, mobilized on resources to victims of the flood last year in Central Gonja and North Gonja. So this year, we don't know whether because there will not be much rain in the region, even they open the, 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 the Bagri Dam, a similar to repeated or not. That uh, is Isaac Nonya, and those are our, our correspondents across the northern region, painting a picture of how it looks like uh, preparing for the Bagri Great Dam. But um, what has uh, previous uh, spills, uh, what has been the impact? Joining us now is Director of Communications at the National Disaster Management Organization, Nadmo Georgia AC. Um, and also via Zoom is Dr. Charles Nyaba, who is head of programs at the Peasant uh, Farmers. Let me start with you, George AEC. What has been your uh, preparation so far towards this exercise? Hello, George. Kindly unmute for me. Uh, okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Can you repeat the question? I'm asking what NADMO's preparation has been towards uh, this exercise. Oh, thank you, Aisha. Uh, good afternoon to you and your viewers. Uh, I was happy listening to your correspondence. Uh, I think three out of the four have all indicated uh, not more officials have started a community sensitization uh, in the communities and urging people to move to uh, higher and safer grounds. Uh, that is it, except for the Savannah guy who says he's yet to see that. But we've, we've uh, engaged our people to begin that exercise. We are going to uh, dispatch a team from headquarters to pitch camp in Wali Wali uh, so they'll be able to coordinate the activities in all the five uh, northern regions that are going to be affected by the spillage. And so, yes, we've started a sensitization. And I was happy again to hear that uh, last year, because of the coincidence of the heavy rains and then the spillage, uh, the effect was, was very bad on us and the people there. Uh, this year, the rains have come, uh, is abated a bit. We pray that uh, the heavy rains uh, holds on a bit, uh, it does not coincide with the spillage, so that the impact will not be as devastating as last year. So yes, uh, NADMO is preparing, uh, we'll be pitching camp, and the community sensitization is going on. Uh, we build the assemblies, as one of your correspondents says, the assemblies and opinion leaders in the communities help us to do this job and the chiefs and elders in the area. So, yeah, that's what we are doing. We are in readiness to uh, begin the work. Okay, so Dr. Nyamba, I particularly understand the plight of farmers because of the impact this exercise has had on the farmers, especially and farmlands um, in past spillages. Now, what has been the fears of farmers? And I mean, um, to that, what has been their preparation so what's uh, this exercise? Dr. Nyaba, kindly unmute for me. Okay, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Dr. Nyaba. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Isa. And let me say good afternoon to uh, Joy News team for doing this uh, wonderful work. Um, I think this is a serious concern coupled with uh, the challenges we are facing this year, which has to do with uh, difficulty access to government subsidized fertilizer and other input for farming. 
uh, you agree with me that from uh, last month, there has been complaints from poultry farmers and consumers mm -hmm. in urban areas of shortage of uh, maize and other food commodities. Uh, we had mentioned this last year that if contingency measures were not put in place, given that uh, most farms that were dependent for this maize last year were carried away by the flood, uh, it was going to have negative impact on food security. And that was what happened last year. So um, when the, we got the announcement that Bagri Dam was going to open, we have started sensitization, sensitizing our people. Um, we are carrying out radio programs and then doing community community sensitization for our people to move to higher grounds. But my concern is that why do we always have to wait so that every year around this time we go and do sensitization, give food items, and then the following year the same thing happens. We don't have to rely or place our hope on Burkina Bay's so that if they do this, then we come out and do this. The water is a good resource. Very soon, we are the very people who will be crying for water for farming purposes. When the issue came last year, and then we were going around discussing with government, we were made to understand that government is quickly going to construct the Polgo Dam to contain this water when it comes, so that we use it for farming and to avert the impact of the flooding. But nothing has been done since what happened uh, uh, last year. So that is a matter of concern. So for this year, we still uh, appeal to uh, the authorities that we shouldn't wait for this to happen, then we go there and start mobilizing resources to support the communities. Because what happened last year, when government moved away and the rain subsided, nothing happened again. Government never went there, tried to force these people to move to higher grounds or to relocate uh, them so that this doesn't happen. There hasn't been any intervention to ensure that what we experienced last year doesn't happen again. And this year we are there again. Mm -hmm. So that is our disappointment. But we are doing something in our small way to sensitize these uh, farmers and those who are uh, uh, settlers around the white uh, water basin to actually move to higher grounds. Um, Dr. Nyaba, um, as you prepare for this and also as in your little way, um, uh, sensitize the farmers to be ready for this spillage. I'm sure you're also highly expectant, just like you mentioned, that authorities will put in place measures to deal with the effects, specifically because of what you've seen in the past, specifically what would you expect to be done so that the effects will be minimized? Uh, for now, even though uh, the vic those uh, expected victims are our members, I think we shouldn't wait, all of us, not more government, whoever is concerned. If we can quickly move to those grounds and those that we think that they are a threat of uh, their houses being carried away, we have to find a way of forcing them to move to higher grounds. Because we can't wait when this happens, then the same people will be crying that we should come to their aid. For now, that is what we need to do urgently. We shouldn't wait after the spillage, then we start uh, going to see how we can help them. But for us, we are actually, as we speak, my team are in those communities trying to talk to our members to actually move. But we cannot force them to move, those who are refusing to move. But I think government and NADMO can do that. Mm. Uh, so, Mr. E.C., what's the plan for expectant, uh, the expectant effect of the spillage, especially for farmers and uh, also property and, uh, and, and the others, individuals, if, if we lose some lives? Yeah, so the yeah, plan... Yeah. Okay, so Dr. Nyaba yeah, wants to come in. Dr. Nyaba, come in. No, no, no that is fine. Let, let, let him come in. I'm okay. Sure. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy with what I'm seeing on your screens, uh, that some farmers are moving in to harvest some of their crops. Uh, we didn't have that privilege last year because the uh, crops had not reached the ripe stage, and so most of them were submerged under water. Uh, so this year, uh, since they are harvesting some, we're sensitizing them to go ahead, those that are ripe, uh, to harvest them so they'll be able to have some uh, 
benefits and all will not be uh, lost to uh, the flats. Again, the sensitization is also uh, going on. But because most of them have their farmlands closer to the banks of the river, especially the white water, uh, it's difficult. If, if the crops are not ripe for them to harvest, uh, it's likely to be submerged underwater. But the other good news, uh, Aisha, is that most of them, since the recent times, have this, uh, stopped building close to the uh, flood-prone areas. Most of them are not living there. They only get there because they are farming. There's a fertile place for the farming. But their houses are a bit farther away. And, and, and the sensitization is also urging them to move to higher ground, safer area, and integrate with families in safer places. And then, as one of your reporters said, if the need be, and we need to put them in some schools and classrooms or churches, uh, mm -hmm. we will do that for their safety. And then their livestock to be moved. Uh, these are all part of the sensitization approach. And then our team that is pitching Camp in Walu Wali is also going to do be there in case of emergency and some people must be saved. You know, we want them not to attempt to cross uh, the rivers when the floods are in, but sometimes some feel they can cross and go to harvest their crops. And so if we have such recalcitrant ones, uh, our team will be able to go there and, and, and support or save their lives. So that's why we are pitching camp in Walu Wali. In case there's any agent call, we can move within the radius to all the five regions where uh, they are under threats uh, of the spillage. Well, let's talk about relief items because definitely um, the effect we know will come, but uh, even though we are praying it will be minimized, how much do you have in stock? Uh, we have some relief items in stock. Uh, prior to the upper world incident, which washed the rules away, we had prepositioned some uh, relief items. And so, yes, we use some of that to uh, help those who were affected. Uh, looking at this, northern region, upper east, savannah, uh, upper west, and uh, northeast, uh, we have some prepositioned relief items uh, which can take care of the initial contingencies. Uh, when we are overcome, as I keep saying, uh, we'll be able to restock and to uh, support them better. Dr. Jabba, you wanted to make a point earlier. Hello, Dr. Nyaba. Dr. Nyaba, um, I'm, I'm mute for me. Yeah. Hello? Yes, Dr. Nyaba, I can hear you. Make your point. Yeah, I think uh, my point uh, was uh, about uh, how we prepared when it occurred. But I think my colleague from uh, NEDMO uh, mentioned it as part of our sensitization program that we started three days ago. Uh, was for the farmers to get prepared, those who think that they can harvest their produce that are ready for harvesting to do that. And those who also have uh, livestock to move to higher ground. Uh, but in terms of uh, those who are who settle closer to the river uh, banks, I think we were urging them to quickly find relatives on the higher grounds uh, to start to move to those areas. Uh, but I think that uh, every year this has happened, we do all this talking, and when uh, the rain subsides, we go to sleep. That is where my concern is, and uh, I want government to take that seriously because this water is a good resource for us. We shouldn't allow it to cause havoc, carry um, a shelter, uh, our livestock, our food crops away, and at the end of the day, we continue to complain. Government will have to find means of resettling these uh, communities. Okay, yeah, okay, sure, Asha. sure. Yeah, Asha, I think uh, Dr. Nyaba has a good case. Uh, this is a, a capital-intensive project with the Paul Gudam. We at NADMO were excited uh, last year when His Excellency, the Vice President, and the team went there. Uh, if you look at the hands out of Parliament, uh, it's uh, almost about a billion, uh, is it dollars or CDs project? And so we urge government uh, not to uh, relent uh, in the effort to get the Polugu Dam constructed so that they can harvest the water and save, you know, uh, to have all year round a great distance. That's the vision. Mm -hmm. But to save lives and properties 
uh, in these times. That's why Doctor is saying that after this, it's like we all go to sleep, and then the next year we come back. If efforts in the construction of the Polugu Dam is intensified, uh, it will help all mm -hmm. of us, especially uh, the people in the area. And Doctor and Nadmo and the rest of us will all be uh, happy for that. Thankfully, uh, David Pra, who is senior government and PR at the Volta River Authority. Uh, Kualugu yeah. Multipurpose Dam Project has joined us. He can provide yeah. some answers for us. What has become of the Kualugu Dam? Hello, yes, David. Uh, first of all, let me extend my greetings to my co-panelists and then our cherished uh, Like you've stated, it's actually the president of the Republic of Ghana, Madame Kukufuado, sees the Kualugu Multipurpose Dam Project as the key to all this flooding pro uh, problem that we are facing. As we are all aware, the Polygon Multipurpose Dam is a three-prone uh, facility. We have the hydropower dam, which is going to give us 70 megawatts. We have the solar component, which is going to give us 50 megawatts. And 25,000 hectares of uh, irrigable land will be cultivated. And the reservoir area covers 360 kilometers square. And so from eight major communities, including Talensi, Nabdam, Binduri, Boku West, West Mampusi, covering uh, East Mampusi, Unkrugu, Yoyo area. So uh, the, currently, the project has reached the pre-construction stage. The pre-construction, we mean land acquisition. The project has to acquire the land. We are acquiring almost about 11,000 hectares of uh, land from this uh, district. So it's very critical. We have also engaged the communities on the RAP, that is the Resettlement Action Plan, and then the Environmental Social Impact Assessment. Two weeks, we are moving to uh, Zebila to engage the community on whatever impact that they may see that this project is bringing so that we now uh, get the executive instrument for the acquisition of the land. We are also at the Weir area, that is the West Mampusi, Sariba area, where we are demarcating the land and where that's going to uh, help with the irrigation facility. Contractors are on the site. The Power China, which is the main contractors, are on the Kurugu side of the project. What they are doing is to still carry out extensive hydrological studies because this dam is so big because of the flatness of the area. It's going to cover a whole lot of area. So what they are doing is to carry out extensive hydrological studies so that when we finish, then the Polukum multipurpose dam will be able to contain this. Again, we are resettling seven communities from these areas, seven communities. These communities are within the uh, platform areas. For example, Sukna, Kurugu, Parkuri, Kurubio, Pasitu, and then Nungu communities, all of the researchers. What is happening is that when we say it's a flood control project, it means we first to move the people from the platform areas, the low line areas, to a very safe place so that the, uh, when the time comes and then there's any spillage, the 360 kilometers uh, reservoir area will contain the, the, the flooding, and we use it to generate hydro and power and then the uh, irrigation facility. So the contractors are on the site, surveyors are on the site. We who are also engaging the communities on the land acquisition, because you are acquiring almost 11,000 hectares, people's land. We need to do extensive consultation so that at least and then compensation plan will, be, will have to be in place. Uh, our schedule, November, December, the construction has to start. That is the first water has to start. So we are not far. Note that this is a huge uh, project and it's going to uh, the last one for the construction is four years. So the government is committed, the president is committed, Water River Authority is extensively carrying out the activities, and I think we'll get there. Uh, are there timelines as to uh, when this project will be completed? Like I, I, I stated, 
Now we are still on the land acquisition. We finished the demarcation of the dam boundary uh, from all the seven uh, upstream districts. And then uh, West Mampusi, we are also carrying out. By the end of next month, we should finish with the uh, demarcation and the surveying of the weir area for the irrigation. And then uh, by November, December, the contractor, that's far China, has to finish with everything and begin with the bricks and mortar activity. And it will run through to four-year period, and the completion will be... So, okay. so exactly when would we feel the impact? The, the, the impact will be felt when the dam is uh, completed. When that is in four is years. Complete. Yes, in four years' time. So that is what uh, will feel the impact. Dr. Nyaba, this should come as good news. Dr. Nyaba, kindly unmute for me. Hello? Yes, Dr. Nyaba, go ahead. Yeah, I said this has rather come to me as a surprise that uh, Mr. David today is telling me that uh, uh, they are now at the initial stage uh, doing community consultation. Because last year when this discussion came up, uh, we made clear that contractors will move to site and the work had started. Uh, we had two years since uh, this uh, whole uh, discussion has taken place when government said they have made a location for construction of the fall group down. Last year, budget allocation was made. This year, budget allocation was made. So if all this is done, and then we made a follow-up, and we can't see any contractor on the site, and today Mr. David is telling me that they are now doing consultation, they are now doing community settlement. This is a different story from the discussion that took place last year. Because we were all in this country when the issue came, and then we had the response from government. I, I had occasion of visiting the site with some media men, including your own re reporter from Bulgaria. We got to the place and we couldn't see any contractor on the site. So the only portion that should come to me as good news is when David said contractors are at the site, which uh, I'm not too sure uh, of that information. Because when we went there the other time, there was nothing going on <coughs> about the sword cutting that took place last year. Mm. Um, David, you want to provide some answers? Yeah, uh, quickly, uh, I want my good friend, Dr. Nyaba, to note that we are talking about over uh, or nearly $1 billion project. We are talking about a project that's going to have, have uh, that is hybrid system, hydropower. We are talking about solar facilities. We are talking about 25,000 hectares. It's not just, uh, excuse me, possibly maybe one block that we are project. It's a huge project. We are taking people's land. 11,000, even land demarcation alone would take mm -hmm. almost about a year or two to demarcate and to uh, survey the whole area. We've finished with all the, the, the uh, talency, we've finished with Nafdam area, we've finished with the Dila area, we've finished with the Bunkrugu uh, portion, uh, Nampanduru portion, we have finished with Gambaga escarpment area, we've come down to Sariba where we are currently on. The surveyors, actually, you see, when we talk about the contractors, they say the, the surveyors are also con contractors. They are on site, as we are talking, as me and you are talking, they are on site. The Water River Authority officials are also continuously engaging the communities. We are working with the Ghana Education Development Authority. So Dr. Yaba should also bear with us that this is a very huge project and it's not just uh, dam construction. It's not just like uh, putting up one block, one building. No, 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 no. We are talking about a huge uh, facility, and we need to get it right. We are learning from we. We are learning from Kong, and better we are learning from Akosombo. So we need to get it right. And there are timelines to all these things. We, you just cannot accept uh, any of this. So you should emphasize this thing. We have given ourselves. Uh, four year duration for construction. Fortunately, the Sino Hydro, the Power China contractors, they are just at a Tamale interchange area. They are the same people who are also constructing the Pualubu Dam. We have been working with them 
uh, even some of the officials are part of our team who are doing the stakeholder engagement so that they understand the community dynamics and uh, the democ demographic uh, characteristics of the, the area. So it should bear with us. We have not relented on our effort. We have been very, very focused and very aggressive in our activities. Engagement is a key component. They are taking almost about 11,900 hectares of uh, land from the people. Where are they going to farm? We are getting alternative farmlands from the chiefs and people. Uh, the the, the uh, Nairi, the river chief, has been very, very supporting to this project. Uh, now, Professor Nabila has been very supporting the Bokunaba, all the chiefs and people of the area that uh, Tongorana uh, from Talensi, they've all been very helpful, and we've never relented. So possibly he may join us in one of our engagements, and you will understand that, yes, the Volta River Authority has never relented as a, a, a government representative of the project. Dr. Nyaba, he says he should bear with government because mm -hmm. it's a big project. Yeah, I think I just have to uh, to take his words. Uh, my concern is that this four years project and then use two years to do resettlement and then engagement as we speak. The resettlement hasn't been done. He's talking about doing the demarcation, doing the engagement, and two years are almost gone. So if you can use the rest of the two years to be able to finish with the construction, then that is good. So we, our concern is that the work should be done, but from the information we got last year, from key government officials, including the vice president, was that work had started. Contractors moved to site and work had started. Mm -hmm. But if this work means Quick. the initial engagements and the, the, the rest of the two years left will be enough to complete the uh, construction, we are uh, playing with uh, that. Aisha, please, uh, let's, let's move that. Uh, the pre-construction activities are even more extensive than the construction. The construction says you are talking about the, the, the actual dam site and then the, the, the dam site activities. That that is not as extensive as what what we are doing. So they should bear with us. We have never. I have been in the north for almost about six months. I have been in the north and uh, <laughs> doing series of engagement, joining the surveyors. We are working with Land Commission. They are doing valuation of properties. Each and every property on the land has to be valued for government to pay compensation. And we finished with the seven districts. We are now left with the weir area at the Chalency, uh, sorry, West Mampusi, and then some southern part of the Chalency, that's uh, Arugu, Walugu, Arugu area. So that is where we are, the are currently on. Mr. Pra, I think I understand Dr. Nyabe's plight. He's saying that if it is possible to use the rest of the two years to complete the job, is this something workable? All right, so I think we lost uh, David Pra there, but um, Dr. Nyaba, um, I'm sure you're convinced with what David Pra has been explaining to you. Uh, usually, we it's not like you want to criticize government projects, but we always speak based on experience. And uh, the question you ask is very relevant uh, because based on what David is saying, you see that this is a huge project. And last year, we were, we were told that work had started. So if we are using these two years to still do the preliminary work, and then he is convinced that the rest of the two years left is enough to, uh, to get the, the construction completed, we are fine. But uh, let's all record this, that next year we won't come here and still be talking about uh, pre-work uh, that is ongoing, because we have seen this in the past. So we just hope that this particular construction will be different. Mr. Isi, you've been uh, monitoring the conversation. Your last words. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think Dr. Nyaba, being a citizen and, and a good one at that, uh, with his people, uh, I believe they can liaise with uh, David and then know uh, the stage by stage progress of work. Uh, so they'll be also they'll be able to make their inputs. I believe they are not the technocrats, but as citizens who are directly affected 
uh, by the works of the Paul Ugu Dam. I think if they engage uh, them, because he has a huge following, Dr. Naba. Uh, so if he understands it and is able to explain it to his people, as he said, if the next two years we'll be able to do the construction proper and complete it, it will be good for all of us, especially those of us at NABU, uh, because we wouldn't be saddled with some of these things. But if David is there, Aisha, uh, there's been this argument that it comes to us at NABU that uh, talent see the Pualugu is a bit downstream, uh, but when the dam is, uh, the, the bagri is spilled, the impact is on those closer to the border upstream. Uh, does it mean they are still going to be bearing the brunt uh, even after the construction of the Pualugu Dam? Uh, or there's a measure that is going to be put in place upstream to ensure that the people there are not affected continuously, even after the construction of the Puala Buddha. And that's what I'll be glad if David can answer that for well, us. Unfortunately, we lost uh, David and we're <laughs> still trying to get him to explain uh, some of these things to us. But this is a conversation that will continue as far as the Bagri Dam spillage um, continues. And until... Uh, this is over. This conversation is not over. Thank you so much, gentlemen, this afternoon for your time. Char Dr. Charles Nyaba is head of programs at the Peasant Farmers Association. George AEC is director of communication at NADMO. And David Pra, who we lost briefly, a senior government and a PR officer at VRA Polugu um, Multipurpose Dam Project. I'm grateful for your time, gentlemen.